Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. I'm now using my new MacBook Pro, the 2021 version with the M1 Pro for exactly one month, mostly for Android development, but also, yeah, other kinds of development for Photoshop, a little bit of video editing and stuff like that. And I thought I will give you a little review here because I know so many of you are actually looking for a new laptop or just want to know, hey, Philip, what's the best laptop out there that I can get for Android development? Which laptop? can really run that emulator very smoothly. So yeah, here's my review. This especially comes from the perspective of a lifelong Windows user. So yeah, I never really touched macOS before getting this MacBook here a month ago. So if you're a Windows user and you consider switching to Mac, then this will be very helpful for you because yeah, you will just see that whole thing from a, from a Windows user's perspective. And yeah, of course, using this for a single month does not say anything about the long-term experience. So yeah, that's something I can't cover here. However, I will focus on the uh, usability. So how much do I like using macOS for development? How fast it is actually with Android Studio together? And also I will talk about the compatibility. So if you maybe want to use that together with your Windows machine, then also what about the M1? Does it uh, come with some problems? Is there software that doesn't run on that? How, how does it support the Android emulator? All that will be things I will talk about here from an Android developer's perspective. First of all, the model that I'm actually using is the uh, MacBook 2021 M1 Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD drive. So just that you have a reference point to yeah, what I'm using. So you can also you also have an impression of what makes sense to, to use if you want to actually have the same performance as I have here. And I will also put a link down below to this model if I can find a link, um, because yeah, the, these different models of the MacBook Pro, the new ones are very often sold out Then other models uh, are available. So yeah, if I find a link to my model or a very similar model, then you will find this in this video's description. So I will now go through these three main criteria points here that I mentioned. So speed, usability and compatibility. And I will give my personal rating from zero to 10 for each of these points, because I think, yeah, that's pretty helpful. I will start with speed and I must say that will get a 10 of 10. So we all know that Android Studio is not the, the most performance software or actually requires quite some good hardware, but it runs super smoothly on the new M1 Pro. So there are no issues at all with it. The Gradle builds are super quick, actually, especially compared to my older Windows machine. There I use like a five year old Intel i7 7700K. And yeah, that's not a comparison. Like the, the M1 Pro is so quickly, if you have like a normal size project and you build it for the very first time, then the build is often finished in 30 to 40 seconds, which is super quick compared to what I was um, used to before. Also things like invalidating caches and restarting Android Studio, which you probably also often need to do. I need to do that on a daily basis because some stuff doesn't work in Android Studio. And yeah, that's just the first approach you actually always try out to invalidate the caches and restart it. That's also super quick with the M1 Pro. So you actually click invalidate caches restart and 30 seconds after that, you can just use Android Studio again. And you don't need to wait for minutes until actually, yeah, Android Studio actually rebuilt everything and uh, finished this indexing process and all that stuff. That really saves quite some time if you need to do that quite often. And I also often get the question how the Android emulator runs on the M1 Pro and if it is actually supported because yeah, the M1 Pro is quite a new type of processor on the market. And yeah, I will talk a little bit about that in the compatibility section here, but I can tell you uh, the it definitely supports the Android emulator and it runs super smoothly. So on Windows, I actually I couldn't really use the, the latest Android emulator. So the one with Android 12, um, API level 31 it is. But on macOS, it just runs as if it was a normal phone. So that's pretty cool. However, uh, don't expect that you won't have issues with the emulator. You will have the same issues you're also used to on Windows. While it runs a lot smoother on macOS when it runs, it's often still a struggle to get it uh, to get it to run. Um, so that's not a, an issue of the operating system here. 
it seems to just be an issue of Android Studio because the Android emulator just sucks. So very often when dealing with the emulator, you just have these issues, these typical issues. We all know that if you want to delete a device, it says, hey, the device is already running. If you want to start a device that is not running, it will still tell you, hey, it's running. So these are issues that are really, yeah, just um, related to Android Studio and not to the operating system. So overall, in terms of speed, I'm super happy with the new MacBook Pro. Haven't noticed any performance issues at all. So 10 out of 10 here for that. Criteria number two is actually the usability. So how intuitive do I like, or do I find uh, macOS for development? and also a little bit in general, just for stuff you typically need to do on your on your machine from a Windows user's perspective here. Of course, I'm a little biased here when I used Windows for my whole life and I'm used to all these Windows specific mechanisms. However, yeah, I think it's still helpful if I um, share my experience here uh, with switching to macOS. So first of all, the thing that I really like a lot more on macOS, and that is something that affects pretty much all of us developers, and that is the terminal. So the macOS terminal, since macOS is also a Unix based operating system, is very similar to the Linux terminal. So the Linux terminal is amazing. <laughs> if you're a Linux user, you will know that. And the macOS terminal is very similar to that. So it's also a really great terminal and really feels much more like something you would use to actually manage your whole operating system than the Windows command line. So in this regards, big plus for macOS. One thing that I have a little bit of a problem with is that I find at some specific things, Apple try to be a little bit too simple with, uh, with their UI and UX here in uh, macOS. Let me give you a little example. For example, if you are in a folder in Finder, so in your Explorer basically, and you just want to create a new text file, an empty text file there or an empty document or whatever, and in Windows, you just right click and say empty text file. In macOS, that's not possible. So I did not find an easy way to just create an empty text file in the folder you're currently at. So the easiest way by default is to open your text editor, open an empty text file and then click save, save under and then navigate to that folder where you actually are, already are. So that was quite some effort to just do something simple as creating an empty text file. I found ways to actually work around that by just installing some plugins to actually extend these menus. Um, however, I think that's not really necessary. That should be something that is integrated in the operating system by default, in my opinion. Also, I as a developer wouldn't have any issues to actually use the terminal to create an empty file, which is just a simple command. However, there's also no easy way to actually launch the terminal by using a right click in the current folder where you are currently at. Maybe I'm missing something here and I just lack the experience here with macOS, but I really Googled a lot about that. And it seems like there is no easy way to do that without actually installing plugins. That's just one example. Um, there are a few of these where I thought, okay, that's a little bit too simple. Apple could have extended this with some more options. But yeah, overall, that's really not a big issue. You get used to this stuff and overall, yeah, eight out of 10 here for usability is quite good. And let's get to the last section and that is the compatibility here. So here I will talk about everything in regards to the M1 Pro. Um, is, is there some kind of software that it doesn't support? I will talk about what if you actually want to share the same setup uh, between your Windows machine and your MacBook Pro. Those will be things that I will cover here. All in all, I will give the compatibility of the MacBook Pro a seven out of 10. So all in all, I didn't face any critical issues here. So issues that I wanted to solve, but couldn't solve due to some constraints of the of the CPU or so. So that's good. You have to know that if you buy a MacBook with the M1 CPU, then there will be softwares that uh, won't support this new architecture or that will lead to some problems at least. However, those softwares that I actually use on a daily basis as an as a developer and specifically Android developer. So Android Studio, IntelliJ, whatever, Slack, Google Chrome, all these softwares that come from these big manufacturers and big companies, there are absolutely no issues. They all have a special version for the M1 Pro that is specifically made for that and just yeah optimized for that as well. But I often heard at least that it can lead to some issues with 
maybe some software that is yeah that does not come from a very big manufacturer that uh, fr from someone who does not have the money to actually write an optimized version for the m1 cpus and when you're actually developing something then it can sometimes at least cause some errors and you have to do some research how to fix that and then you find, find out okay that might be related to m1 cpus like for example i was recently getting into kmm kotlin multi-platform mobile and yeah there was just there were some issues for m1 cpus but i was able to fix these just by uh, yeah, doing some research and the second part of this compatibility section here is as i said um, to share the same setup between windows and mac os or if you just want to use more windows like setup for your mac uh, macbook pro what can you do in that case well um, initially you need to put in quite some research if you have never dealt with something like that but there are luckily quite some solutions you can do uh, you can use and especially if you want to use your macbook as your main machine and you want to plug it to your other monitors like i did here i have two big monitors that i now plugged into my macbook pro that's luckily supported as far as i know the 2020, uh, 2020 version of the macbook pro does not support more than one external monitor but the 21 version does so that works that's good um good job apple and if you want to use the the um other parts of your setup like want to share a keyboard want to share a mouse want to share an uh external drive or whatever then you need something that's called a docking station that's that's something i also got that's basically just yeah a device that comes with tons of ports for ethernet cable for usb for your monitors and all that stuff and then takes all these ports and leads them to a single output cable that you can then plug into your MacBook. And if you then want to use the same setup on your Windows machine, you can simply use the single cable and plug it into your Windows machine. So you don't need to replug everything all the time, only the single cable. And as far as I know, there are also solutions where you can just have some kind of switch where you just click a button and then it will lead all the output to your Windows machine. And if you click it again, it will lead all that output to the MacBook. So that's definitely easy. It requires some yeah, initial investment and setting that up and stuff like that. But once it works, it actually works. Yeah. So I'm using, I'm doing this like for a month now. Haven't had any issues. This device sometimes gets a little hot. So this docking station, which is normal as far as I researched. So yeah, I think most of these docking stations actually get hot and yeah most people say that's not an issue so let's hope this doesn't explode one day i will also put a link to this docking station that i use down in this video's description probably to amazon um just yeah where i got this maybe this is not uh, available in your country because there are so many different versions of amazon but if you're from the eu or uh, from germany specifically then you will definitely be able to find this so all in all i am really happy with it i don't regret a single penny that i spent for this even though it was quite expensive um but yeah it runs super smoothly i don't have any performance issues i can do everything that i need to do as an android developer and uh, it, it really helps to just have something here for my main machine i'm only using this to to work on here at home and meanwhile i can also take this and yeah use it when i'm traveling or whatever so if the money does not hurt you then this is definitely a recommendation if you if it would really hurt you then you will definitely also find windows laptops that are a lot cheaper and also have quite good performance i would be really interested in what you actually use for development do you use a real pc do you use a laptop and if so what are your specs are you happy with that i think that way if you mention that in the comments we can actually very well help each other so other people can see oh someone is actually using this setup and it works well um it, it will just help anybody here who is considering to um, get a new laptop or get a new pc for development purposes so just put that down in the comments i wish you an amazing day thanks for watching and i'll see you back in the next video bye bye